Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today we are here at Crystal Cottage and I am out in the area of my garden called the Botanical Garden where I want to show you the wonderful bushes behind me here. This video today is all about the beautiful Thea Occidentalis Brabant. Yes, I have bought so, so many of these plants that I had to do a video of how they are now compared to when I bought them many years ago because they have done so well for me in my garden. It's unbelievable. And of all the plants that I bought, I've only lost a couple. These plants are well worth buying because they are evergreen and they are such great hedge plants for dividing up the garden here. And I am going to take you on a tour around my garden and show you just how much I've used this specific plant to divide up the different areas of my garden because they just do a fabulous job all year round. So that is the border between the Garden of New Beginnings and Bonfire Garden. And this one is the border between the Bonfire Garden and the Garden of New Beginnings as well, actually. So then I have this hedge of Thuya here on the right hand side of Sauna Land. They're doing very well. I cut them back and a little bit of autumn browning which is absolutely normal and inevitable these do change out their needles every year or so so it's quite normal that they brown out some during this time of the year don't worry about that as long as most of the plants are green they are very healthy and happy so we'll carry on and look at the ones on the other side and as we pass we'll see these lovely larches here changing into their autumn colors aren't they gorgeous a row of those as a hedge at the front of cozy co so this side is the left side of cozy cove with the thuyas and this is the right hand side of cozy cove with thuyas and they're all doing very well as well some are four meters high some are three so these are all doing fabulously as well and they are the hedge that is between Cozy Cove and Island Garden and my area where I have my compost so they're a lovely backdrop there and then I just have one standalone example here and then we'll go on into the inner garden and you'll see the backdrop here all of these fabulous thuya bushes doing amazingly here absolutely amazing here look at this wall of green now there's one that i moved this year when i made the new pathway and it struggled a little bit this year because it's been so dry but it too is bouncing back and should be lovely and green like the rest next year so this is where that bush was and then the one on the edge here is doing okay now as well because it was standalone it got nibbled up badly by the deer on the stem here look at this quite badly so i've protected it and it is otherwise doing very fine So that's the entrance to the island garden and now I'm standing in west side garden and you can see the backside of these three are here. And these had the Japanese knotweed growing in amongst them for many years. So these ones down on the right hand side are much shorter than the ones going up on the left that were further away and not near any Japanese knotweed and they weren't disturbed by the root competition and the chemical warfare that the Japanese knotweed to give off in the soil that stunts growth. But at the same time, I've heard that these plants also do the same with other plants, not as vigorously as the Japanese knotweed. And they can grow there next to the Japanese knotweed, but it did stunt their growth. So look at that. 
The ones right at the end I did buy as three meter bushes already. So these here I planted out and they're doing absolutely fabulously. So now I'm going to spin around because if we should go in the back of Westside Garden, we will see more of the larger thea that I planted out the back here. And there we go. These were also some that were already three meters when I bought them and some were only between 60 and 80 centimeters and they've grown out. There's a gap here. But um, some of them made it, and where the gaps are, those ones browned out because it's very dry up on the side here along the roadway. But for the most part, they're doing well. And then all along the back of the garden here, we're in Mariana's Corner now, I'm going into the botanical garden, I planted out all of these thuya here, no dig. So if we look down the bottom, you can see the containers that they're still in. And, and there, you can see the containers. These were planted no dig, and they have just done so well. Look at the whole edge of the garden, it's absolutely green. They grow under these aspen trees, and then fill out the backdrop. I'm so pleased I did this. Again, look at the no dig container I put them in, all of them. To fill out this backdrop and I've placed some as singular examples in the front like this one doing very well and then the rest behind the rhododendrons here and amongst some of the spruce trees and this is a standalone example in Yorkin's corner looking beautiful and this one I trimmed up the stems so that I could just have it growing like a canopy. And then in the back of Joachim's corner, I bought these plants here, already three meters tall, and they were also planted no dig. You can see the container at the bottom. They've struggled because it's been so dry, but yet they're green and lush at the top again now that it's been raining and wet for a while. I lost one, you can see there's a gap here. That one died. But other than that, the green backdrop of the garden is just fabulous with these thuya. And these ones here are perfect just to take away the brown color all winter long. And then along the right hand side of Yorkins Corner, there are Thuya growing under this huge, beautifully winter colouring up beech tree. Right up to the bottom of the trunk and yet they have been growing and filling out this area absolutely fine and with no problem. So this is a mixture of no dig and dig. These ones here on the edge here I dug into the ground, straight into the ground. The ones at the back here are all no dig, every single one, no dig, no dig, except the standalone examples that I mentioned before. And the ones around the inner garden, so if we race back over to that area where we can see them, and the ones in the botanical garden just over on the side over here, they were all dig. And the three meter high ones here are ones that I dug holes and put straight into the ground here are doing fine. And all of these were also dug straight into the sandy clay kind of soil that was here. And they were so small. They were so small. And now look at the size of them. These are all getting on over the four meter high mark and they've become an amazing green wall. Just just love it. Look at that. So they outline 
the botanical garden from the inner garden right up to the edge of the annex and then across and on the other side of the annex I again planted these they are in this no dig container and look at those what a beautiful example of a Thea bush and if we look at the bottom it's just the wooden frame still I've just put some stones in front put them in with garden soil and left them to do their thing and they've worked out perfectly look at this there's the annex and there's the Thea all the way along the edge of them so in different areas of my garden they really have helped to outline the different areas and keep it outlined like that all winter long and that was the whole point and it's just perfect now this plant when it's small the deer will go in and munch down your plants and if you have standalone examples the deer will go in and chew off the bark of the stems during the winter time especially i found that but as a hedge they don't seem to go in and touch the bushes at all just the standalone bushes around in my garden have been attacked <laughs> but these bushes now that they've grown so big the deer just wander around and they don't even look at them. They don't even munch the leaves on these. It's not so interesting for them. It's when they're young plants or where they can get at the bark mostly. These bushes behind me here have done absolutely fantastic. And I am going to plot in some photos now of this plant when I first planted them. So look here, you can see just how small my bushes that have been behind me in this video the whole time were when I first bought them way back in 2017 when they were only around 60 centimetres high. So that's six years for them to grow to nearly four metres or more actually right now. I'm just amazed how fantastically well they've done and that it's just first now that I've started pruning them back. So as I said, a couple of years of slow growth and then they just suddenly take off. And now that I've started pruning them, they're probably really going to just take off and bush out a lot and need to be pruned back every year, which means a lot more cuttings. <laughs> but after I've planted out all of these first plants, then in 2018, I decided to buy some three meter high examples to put in a row at the back end, which you could see behind me in the video here as well. And they've been doing really, really well. And well, I mean, the fact that the others have already caught up or are a little bit taller in some examples than these bushes, well, that's just amazing. Six years. And then in 2019, I decided to buy some medium sized bushes. They were, I think, around one meter tall and plant them in the no dig method all the way around the edge of my garden so you can see the containers that I made the gardening soil I used and how they were planted and just left to carry on like that <laughs> these are some of my most beautiful examples and today I just want to show you very quickly how I prune them because I don't do anything special to make them look like a flat hedge I don't really want that look I just prune in along the edge to try and encourage the bushes to bush out more in between them. And it was only last year that I pruned back some of the bushes for the first time ever. And now I'm going to do the same here because these are getting pretty wide. It's lovely, but I do want to keep a nice thick bushy mass in the middle as well. These, if left to grow out naturally, could get to around 12, 15 meters tall or even more and they could easily get to as a hedge like this together they can easily get to two meters wide if you don't do anything with them 
but if left as a tree that gets 12 meters tall, they could probably reach out in the higher part of the tree to around four meters or so. So they can get very big. And that's why if you're not going to maintain your bushes, please do not buy one of these bushes and plant it around close to the house on the corners of your house and so forth, unless you're going to be very good at pruning around the edge and topping your plant when it gets to the height you want, because otherwise it will end up taking over the area of your house, especially in front of windows, you'll get no light because they will just take over. But out in an open expanse like this, these bushes are <laughs> just an amazing separation between the botanical garden here and the inner garden on the other side. So without further ado, I do want to show you a little bit of me snipping these bushes very quickly. So what I have to do this is this, my hedge trimmer. And I really need to be careful that I don't start going in too much because I really do want to keep this lovely shape. And I am going to get so many of these branches of this plant and all the bigger branches I will use to make cuttings to make me more of these plants because yes, you can easily take cuttings from these bushes. I'll show you that in a moment. Let me get on with trimming. So basically, that is all I want to show you for today. Just a very quick little trim. And as I said, I want my bush to look like it's growing more wild. So I don't want to make it look too much like a straight hedge. It's looking perfectly like a straight hedge as it is with the little bits that come in and out as it does. And it's really doing well. And when you prune back like this, you can expect that some of the needles that you've half chopped along the edge will turn brown and fall off. And that's absolutely fine because as we know, the bush is going to bush out again next season. There are some thicker branches that have taken more of a hit. You can see that, but they will all disappear next year. So these should bush out lovely and wonderful again next year and have no problems. And they'll do that in no time. Something that's very important to think about if you're wanting to make hedges and you're thinking about the light that hits the bush and helping it to green out and so forth is that of course you would like to make more of a pyramid shape which is the shape that the tree grows naturally of course to get as much light to all of its needles as possible so it will grow in this conical shape it will be thicker at the bottom and then thin out at the top as it grows up and then everything will be exposed to the light so you need to try and remember that when you're pruning your bush that the bottom part shouldn't be further in, closer to the trunk while the top is out and thicker because then you won't get much light down here. These needles could start browning out and disappearing and then you'll have to skirt lift the bush and just have a canopy kind of shape and it won't be a hedge anymore. So I only did a rough little pruning on the edge here. So this bush is still very thick on the edge and still does go in in a conical shape, I can see that, so that's very good. And I haven't touched the top, as you saw, because this area is really bushing out and I want this area to be able to grow out a little bit more. It's still quite thin compared to down here, so I don't want to go in and prune all that back too much. And these are getting to the height where I want to stop them. So you can go and top them, which is what I'm going to be doing probably next year. I want them around the four or five meter mark. I'm testing from standing up on my terrace of our crystal cottage and I don't want to be able to see over to the roadway. I want to be able to stand on my terrace and be shielded from the roadway out there. So they have a little ways to go yet, but this is going very fast now because the more years they've been in the ground, the more established they are, the more their roots have reached out into the ground and can get all the nutrients and moisture that they need, the quicker they grow. So just remember the first one or two years, they might grow slow. Then after that, they are going to take off. These plants have done so well. So anyway, what I wanted to show you was all of these pieces, that get pruned off and are lying on the floor can become viable cuttings for you. So you will take off the lower needles of the plant, just like this, and just leave a little bit at the top or maybe some on the side if you want to. And then this stem, you just place it in some 
soil, gardening soil mixed with sand and just keep that moist and these will take off into new bushes. The same here, lovely example, just take these off the sides like that, very quick and easy. You could leave all that, you could take that off if you want to, there you go. Another example, two cuttings and just place that in the soil and they will take off for you. As long as they're kept moist and as long as you don't have them somewhere where they're in bright, direct, burning hot sun during the summer, they need to be kept in a shady place and get bright indirect light and then they'll do absolutely fine for you. And I am going to show you some samples that I made earlier. So this container here is one that I actually made this year when I pruned some of my other bushes back. These have been in this pot now for well over a month and look at them. They're still very green, just a little bit of browning on some of them at the back, not much. They're very green. Look at them closer up. That's all my cuttings over one month old and doing absolutely fantastic. So I'm so pleased that I can make myself more of this bush to plant around and about from now on when I have to prune my big bushes back anyway. This is just amazing. This container, I don't have as many left. And this is one I did last year and these cuttings are fully rooted. So I am going to take one up to show you what it looks like. So right, let's dig one up and see how it's doing down in the soil. It might even be difficult for me to get it up. We'll see. Here we go, this is it. Oh, it's coming up. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. This little tree <laughs> is well on its way. Look at this. So look at all the roots on this lots and lots of beautiful roots and a whole root ball and this root ball I really don't want to disturb because this is ready to be planted straight in the ground. If I go back a bit you can see my little example of a Thuya occidentalis Brabant tree made from a cutting from one of my big bushes from last year. Look at the roots, look closer, look at those roots. That is amazing. Amazing. So don't no one tell me I can't do this because you can. <laughs> Look at that. I'll have so many examples that I can fill out the whole of the perimeter of my garden in no time. Well, no time. They're going to take years to grow the size of these ones here, at least six or seven. <laughs> so back in the pot with that until I'm ready to plant it out somewhere in my garden because that just showed that this works and that's all I wanted to do and in this pot alone I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six examples in this pot to plant in a row somewhere and make me a lovely new bush. So here in my island garden I just want to show you my little collection of cuttings from my Thea Occidentalis Brabant. There they are. In these pots, plastic pots, and just to let you know, I'm not going to be taking these indoors or anything for the winter. They are against this wall. They are under the ledging up there and they will do fine out here on this ledge all winter long and grow roots just like the example that I showed you before, which is this first one that has been out all winter and you saw the roots on it. I didn't take it in or anything. And in fact, this one was on the floor out the back here and I did nothing special. So this is how my little collection is going on. And even though this collection may seem small, I probably have around about 60 plants or so. And this is just fantastic. A great way to get more wonderful plants. So I've really enjoyed showing you how easy it is to prune back your Thuya Occidentalis Brabant bushes in a simple way. You can see lots of videos of experts that do this 
perfectly by measuring the sides and using lots of different equipment to get a perfect shape and size. But for me, I like the half rough look, so this is absolutely perfect for my garden. And that just shows you, you can do lots of things with these bushes. You can make them into different topiaries. How amazing is that? And you can, as I've done with some of my bushes, trim up them and make them into a tree with a canopy instead so that you can use the ground underneath for something else, especially when they're bigger. And well, there's so much you can do with them and they smell amazing, I think. So it's lovely to go past and smell the waft of these bushes when you go past. And then all your cuttings that you take off, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that you would get and turn them into new little plants that you have to plant around in your garden. But as I said, remember, if you're going to put plants this size out somewhere in your garden and you have deer, well, you're going to have to protect them because the deer will munch these up in no time. They will have no chance. So that is really something to think about. But as I said, these big trees, no problem. So if you're one of those people that's been, oh, I don't really like those bushes because I found it's very much a like or dislike of these bushes with many people. And people do like them in the beginning and then they suddenly don't like them anymore when they've got absolutely out of control or if they brown out because they're in the wrong conditions and then they get holes in them or they just aren't doing what people want them to do. So it's really important to think about, well, the soil here, as I said, I did nothing special. This was just a sandy clay soil and these bushes did well. And the other bushes I did no dig were all planted in a gardening soil, compost soil mix that I bought with nothing else added. And they've also done very well. So both types of soil work but these do like to be moist, but like to have a well-draining soil for the best conditions. And also another thing to think about when you're buying these plants as brand new, and especially if you're going to be planting them at the best time of year, which is the autumn, which is now, this is the time where it's very moist. It's very moist in the air and it's very moist in the soil. This is the best time to plant out these types of plants. But when the frost comes, you should protect them with a frost cloth or something like that just to help them out the first winter season. And again, I did nothing like that with mine and they just, they have just championed on and they've been in temperatures. When I first bought them, it got down to minus 20 degrees here and these carried on growing. And every year it's been getting warmer and warmer during the winter for longer periods. And we only had a couple of days last winter at minus 15 degrees, but never below that and not for a very long period. So it's getting easier and easier for these kind of bushes during the winter time but it's also getting harder and harder for them during the summer with longer and longer periods of dry drought and that is very difficult for these plants for an extended period of time you will start seeing browning out and i was starting to worry about my plants around the edges and so forth this year because they did get a lot of browning out but then suddenly we've got this wet flush that's gone on for a very long time now and they have bounced back and I know they're going to do fine. And over the years, they've already adapted themselves to the situation in my garden. And that could be the same in many different situations around the world and where you live specifically. So you just need to keep an eye on that. But anyway, I could go on forever and ever because I love these bushes. I really do want to say I love these bushes and I do think that people should plant them and use them and not just think they're a nuisance plant because they're absolutely not. And not just think, that they're boring or ugly. How could this be boring? It's green all year, it's just amazing. Anyway, all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.